Adam, thanks very much. All right, especially uh, happy to be joined today by Congressman Greg Walden back in our old stomping grounds, the 5 p.m. show. That's right. Five yeah, good to see you. Good thanks to be for being with here. You. You're welcome. So a lot going on. A federal judge uh, just this week issuing a decision uh, ruling in right. favor of uh, endangered fish over Klamath Project irrigators. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I'm, I'm disappointed by that. They were hoping to lift the injunction and get a little more opportunity in a drought year to flow water uh, so we can get the ag economy going in the Klamath Basin. But it is what it is. Um, they tried. The judge had a different opinion of that. And so now uh, we're, we're trying to move very rapidly with the Trump administration to get the $10.3 in disaster relief I got in the omnibus down onto the ground in the basin. And at about 1.37 Oregon time, the Office of Management and Budget, who I've been working closely with, signed off on the work plan. So now it's over to the Bureau of Reclamation. This is really, really important because it gives the, uh, the, the water users the opportunity to take off-project water move it through the project. They didn't have that authority before. So the Bureau of Reclamation has far more flexibility than they've had before. The uh, various irrigation districts are meeting probably as we sit here, uh, trying to work out what they can do among themselves to move water around and make it available to, to ameliorate the situation as best as possible. Uh, I was just on the phone with the Bureau of Reclamation uh, back in Washington coming over here. Um, she's fully engaged. The office in Klamath Falls is fully engaged, and uh, we're doing everything we can to avert the kind of disaster we saw in 2001 when no water went to the project. They will get water. The question is, they have to get it early so that they can plant and, and have it to sustain through that period and know what the consistent amount of water will be long term. So key is get the disaster money onto the ground. That gives the flexibility to do more pumping, more water management, and then be able to move the water around. The upper basin facing a different challenge this year than they've ever faced. After adjudication with the tribes, the state's now coming in and turning off wells. And so, uh, and then they're enforcing the water law, but it's gonna have a real hardship effect in the upper basin. So the Farm Service Administration uh, agency is there and uh, they were at the news conference yesterday talking about what they can do, especially to help those sorts of folks. So we're trying to get every resources we can onto the table. Okay, we got a lot to cover. We're gonna take sure. a quick commercial break. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back to a live five on five with Congressman Greg Walden. Uh, I want to ask you about, uh, as chair of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, you've been actively looking into the opioids crisis. I understand you're planning to introduce some legislation. Uh, what can we expect to see in that? Yeah, so this has been my biggest priority as chairman. Uh, we have begun marking up 63 different pieces of legislation. They're bipartisan in nearly every case, and they span the spectrum. We look at how do we stop the illegal fentanyl from coming into the into the country? These are synthetic opioids. They're not from plants, and they're coming in from China. And so we're we're looking at how do we beef up security at our mail processing facilities? It will stun you that these come in through the U.S. Postal Service. So we've I've had a team up looking at that. We've got legislation. Then we're looking at the addiction problem itself. This needs to be treated as a disease because it is. It reprograms your brain. So we're looking at the addiction piece of this, and then the pay for piece. There's a high per percentage of people that are addicted to opioids who are in Medicare and Medicaid, and we're trying to figure out how to update those rules and regulations so that they get care and coverage. Uh, it's multifaceted and uh, it's bipartisan, and we'll go next week into uh, full committee markup, which means we're going to actually vote on the bills, hoping to get them to the floor by Memorial Day or shortly thereafter. Uh, this is the, we lose more people to death from opioid overdose than you do from traffic accidents in Oregon. Um, during the course of this one hour in news, five people will die. Five people in America will die and a, a thousand people will go into uh, uh, emergency rooms in a 24 hour period. So, I mean, this is really, really deadly stuff. We've seen quadrupling of deaths from opioids overdose since 1999 as we overprescribed. And there was a view that these drugs were not addictive, and we now tragically know they are. And uh, so we've got to revamp the federal system and give help to the local communities. Uh, we put forward a billion dollars uh, nationwide over two years. Uh, Oregon's gotten 13 million of that. Uh, we just put forward another four billion over the next two years to help specifically on opioids. There's another uh, quite a bit of money available for mental health as well, because there is some uh, co-diagnosis uh, co there. Uh, the president is negotiating a peace summit with the leaders of both mm -hmm. North and South Korea. What would your advice be for him if he's in the room with those two leaders? You know, I, I trust but verify. I think that's what Ronald Reagan used to say, especially when it comes to Kim Jong-un, because the history of North Korea is they get what they want 
and they don't follow through with what they promise. Um, but I think this is a president who clearly uh, has done his own sort of negotiation uh, outside the realm of, of how it's normally been done. But uh, hopefully the result that we're seeing emerge could end the Korean War and could denuclearize the peninsula, which would be an his, a, a historic uh, victory. But we're not there yet. And I, I trust uh, Mike Pompeo, who is now Secretary of State, was CIA director. He's the one that went in there first. He is, I know him well. He served on my committee. And, uh, you know, I think, I think the president's got a team now in place um, that will be tough at negotiation, require verification, and, uh, and consistent verification along the way. I, I don't know what all's transformed here, but this is historic to have the North Korean leader and the South Korean leader getting together and the North Korean leader saying he's willing to denuclearize uh, the peninsula and end the war. Um, this, is, this is really one of the biggest things that's happened since uh, the Berlin Wall came down, if indeed it happens. Good to see you. Thanks Good for making time for us today. You got Appreciate it. it. Thanks for it. Stay with us. We'll be right back.